Yo, what's up? My name is RetroPad, and good morning to you all. Today, we're jumping into some Magic the Gathering Arena. I'll be playing some Goblin Charbelter today in Historic, which I think is really cool, and I think the new cards that they've added are super interesting, or they're new to me. They may not be new to you as, like, a... I've been playing, you know, or watching a lot of Goblin Charbelter play in Legacy, uh, in Paper Magic for... I want to say a decade now. I've always been super interested by the deck. I always wanted to build Goblin Charbelcher, but LEDs have only gotten more expensive over the past 10 years. I think it was 10 years ago or something. I was like, oh, I don't want to build Goblin Charbelcher. LEDs are $300, and they're you know mostly just for that deck and certain of the combo decks like Storm, etc. And now they're like $600 or $800 or something ridiculous. So, you know what? That pipe dream may be gone, maybe one day, but... um. We can play it on MTG Arena for the fraction of a price. It's not really a budget deck, I will say. I mean, I built this still kind of on a budget, but, like, you need a lot of... The problem is you can't really build Charbelcher in budget because there's no lands. There's no basic lands. There's no there's no lands at all, uh, technically, right? You play all of these... The way it works in, in MTG Arena is you, you play all these flip lands, right? If you don't know, Goblin Charbelcher is an artifact card that says reveal the cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card, and then jo Goblin Charbelcher deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way. So essentially, this is a turn three or four combo deck that you just blast your opponent for all the damage in your entire deck because you don't play any lands. You don't play any lands, but we use these flip lands that register things like this that register as a spell while in the library, but you can play them, you know, flipped as a land or whatever. So... It allows you to play Goblin Charbelcher in a really, really interesting way. It's so cool that this is possible, in my opinion. And I, f I feel like Goblin Charbelcher really needed the buff. I feel like it was lacking a lot for many, many, many years. And to see a very legacy-style deck playable in Arena was one of the coolest things to me. I always say, I, rem I remember when MTG Arena released, and I was like, oh man, this is my chance this is my time i love magic i'm obsessed with magic i live and breathe magic i can't wait to take arena seriously meanwhile i was a legacy player and i quickly realized oh this is not for me this is this is a standards heaven which is okay i played standard at some point as well but i was no longer which wasn't as interested in it at the moment so we're gonna play our taplin here we have two taplins in our hand we're against the mirror match are you kidding me it must be the mirror match we you don't see this very often that's kind of crazy i don't see that many Charbelcher players. Uh, we're going to play this. We can sometimes... You kind of do want to think about what order you play. We should have this. We're on the play. We're on the play with Strike the Rich. The problem is we don't have our our four mana ritual and we don't have our Charbelcher. So we're going to have to dig to find our win con. That is generally the, 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 the play style of this deck is extremely consistent. Extremely consistent. I actually really want to dig here. I have plenty of mana. Once you have four mana, you're basically there. I'm going to go ahead and play this and then probably play the Golden Egg or probably play this. So this is a great card. Uh, March of Reckless Joy. Additional cost. You may exile any number of red cards from your hand. This spell costs two less for each exiled spell. So I can go ahead and do... Pay the one red. It'd be one. It exile this. Two. Four six if we want to do all of that i think it's actually worth it the problem is you can only play two of those cards the next turn but what i want to do here i'm going to go ahead and do this and until your end of your next turn which is super important so i'm going to go ahead and do one for the land here two four six i think it's worth it so we'll do plus five it'll be seven in total we're exiling all of these cards from our hand basically what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to find two specific cards for next turn and we see both of them. There we go. That's exactly what we want to see. So next turn, we have we should have the win in hand. You're looking for Iron Crag Feet and Goblin Charbelcher. And when you do this, this card adds seven mana to your mana pool, but you can only cast one more spell this turn. Does my opponent have the win before me? Uh, I could actually Pact of Negation here, but I lose anyway when I do that. I guess I could Pact the, uh, the Charbelcher. He's just got the trouble Goblin Charbelcher. That's crazy. He unfortunately had it before me. I'm going to go ahead and pack him and then die at my upkeep like an absolute Giga Chad. Going to take me out. I won't be able to pay the, the mana for it. Uh, you play Pact of Negation 4 of. It's kind of a lot. I don't love the 4 of, to be honest, after, after playing through this a fair bit. But it's nice when you have it. You are an ultra combo deck. So we take a loss on the game one in the mirror match. My opponent just was able to 
assemble his combo pieces a little bit faster, even though I was on the play. More power to him. It happens. Arguably, I should have looked at my hand a little bit more and possibly mulliganed. I think I kept... I think it's something I, I still haven't gotten used to with this deck is... Or even any combo... The amount of <laughs> aggression you should be mulliganing with most combo decks is something that I'm still... I think I'm, I'm a big combo deck player, but even still, I just, I'm not aggressive enough when it comes to my mulligans. I, I'm used to, I play a lot of limited as well, and I, well, you want to keep the hands that are doable and limited. You know, going down on cards and limited is so hurtful, whereas in formats like this, it's not that bad. So usually, in my opinion, you want to mulligan, you want to mulligan down to either an Iron Crag or a Char Belcher. So keeping that last game, keeping a hand with zero of those targets was a big mistake in my opinion. That was a misplay on my part. We're against good old zombie punch. What's up, man? How are you doing? So this game, we're going to go ahead and play a tap land, probably the treachery. You do want to keep any, like, playable cards. Like, for example, there's an argument. I don't think I do this. There is an argument for playing this untapped by paying three life and then pinging this for one. He went down to five. He moved down to five. I don't think we need to do that here. I don't think we're that scared of this card because of that. So we're going to play our tap land. We do have the march as well, so keeping red cards to be able to get to our combo. Equipped Warriors in control of Double Strike. Is this a warrior? This is a warrior. Okay, we might need to ping something here next turn, but we can ping something a lot safer this next turn, which is nice. Gonna hit me for one. Let's assumedly decline this. I don't think he's sacrificing this quite yet. That's a really good draw for us. Ooh, that makes things pretty interesting, actually. I think what I do... I think I go ahead and just ping this guy down. Or actually, this at instant speed. So we'll probably go ahead and play this tapped, I think, hilariously. I could play this and play Strike It Rich. Kind of do want the hazard for my land as well. This is actually very, very tough. This is actually a very tough decision on whether I want to go. I think I should just go on the aggressive, honestly. Arguably. Arguably, I should just go on the aggressive, but I feel like the only way I lose this game is if I go too aggressive and he has enough he has enough to kill me. That's what I'm a little worried about. We're going to play it as a land. I'm going to play this a little slower. I, I, I just need to go a little slower is where I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead and pass turn and look to ping this guy down at instant speed. Maybe, maybe bait him into playing some sort of equipment and then on the equip. Go for it. He's going to just straight up go for the attacks. I mean, I'll go ahead and ping this on the attacks. That's fine. Arguably, I should also should let that happen and just keep that as a land to play. That's arguably fine as well. He's played three lands. Maybe he's flooding a little bit on his draw to five. Once again, on the draw to five, arguably I should go on the aggressive a little bit more here. I just feel like the only way I lose... I don't think I ever lose from going too slow here, but I could be mistaken. Now we don't need to Reckless Hand, we drew our Char Belcher as well. The only problem is now I'm kind of in a weird situation. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play this for, I think just two. I think I'm just playing this for two, pitching the Reckless Hand lane. I'm mostly just looking for a land card to play. Okay, we do find one. That's what I was looking for. That's good. So now we can play this, Strike at Rich, and now we have the win set up next turn. And then even next turn we can play our Iron Crag feat. From our exile into our double triple to, to keep this one just in case we have pact navigation the, the reason for pact navigation is to just counter counter spells who are trying to prevent us from winning the game that's really it so now i can go ahead and play iron crag the only problem is you can't i don't think you hilariously you can't play pact navigation after iron crag because you can only play one spell so if they counter it in this situation i i just can't do that I mean, obviously they're, they're red white so i should be fine but um, so now I use the leftover three mana. Seven mana is hilariously perfect for Charbelcher. I don't know if they printed that on purpose with that in mind. I'm not sure. There we go. There's our first win. That's what it, that's what it looks like. A beautiful negative 27 from our opponent. Tons of damage. It's October 1st as I'm recording, so haven't don't have any rank at the moment. I also like this deck because it's pretty quick in terms of the, the games. Like, some occasionally games will go grindy, and I think that's where it gets very... There's There are a lot of skill-based decisions with this deck. This deck can get you some really easy cheese wins. Sometimes you get an opening hand where you're like, okay, I just win. Like, unless my opponent has something insane, like, I just I probably just win this game. Um, 
but also you have to kind of think about a lot of interactions think about a lot of decisions sometimes uh you might want to keep your magma opus you have this card called magma opus which i haven't really seen quite yet but it's like an eight mana spell um six a blue and a red and usually you just pay two to discard it to create a treasure token it's like a backup it's a backup shittier strike at rich usually occasionally in certain grindy matchups you should keep it use it to deal four damage divided among targets you tap two permanents and you create a four four red elemental creature token and draw two cards i have i have played that card like hard casted it uh at, at times and it's one me games it's it's you have to play each game independently of what's happening right like it, it is a combo deck and you can follow brain dead patterns and you can get a lot of wins Sometimes you're going to have to adjust, and I think I think that's what makes this makes this deck so interesting to me. Is it's a very skill based combo deck, in my opinion, that can also cheese wins. You know, so it's not it's not flawless. Um, here I would go ahead and just play any sort of tap land. Pro no, we want to keep this. You want to prioritize which tap lands you play. Hilariously, is very important. Um, like I wouldn't want to play this here because this is a card that I can actually cast. Um, this is a card you're almost never casting. This is a card you're almost never casting, but I've done it before. Um, so he's obviously keeping a counter spell up. I really doubt he counterspells my Strike It Rich, but if he does, that's fine. So what I would do here is just play this tap land, play Strike It Rich, and if he wants to counter this, sure, he doesn't have it. Yeah, we pass turn. We do have Pact of Negation for this matchup, which is really nice. I guess you ha you almost have to play four of with Pact because you really need it for the matchups you need it for. But there's so ma there's so many matchups where Pact of Negation just does nothing. And once again, with the Iron Krieg sort of situation you you honestly don't even play I, i'm pact of negation i'm kind of uh, the more i've played it when i first started playing it, i was like oh this is sick this is so cool the more i've played it the less i am kind of interested in it to be honest but sometimes it just wins i don't know it depends it really depends on the matchups uh during the end of the turn i tell all spells i don't know what he did oh he played lotus field and that's a, that's a really cool little combo i've never seen that never seen this deck that's really cute that's awesome. Is that two mana for that then? Two mana to play Lotus Field? That's sick. So he's going to have five mana next turn, correct? That's pretty... Maybe he's access to six if he plays an untapped land. That's just cool. What a cool combo. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Um, now I'm in a weird... I think I play... He's playing some sort of combo deck. I think what I do here is I play this, I pay the three life, and I go ahead and play this. And I'm looking for... Arguably, I should just play the March, though. I think the March is better. Yeah, I almost played the wrong card. I think the March is a lot better here, actually. Is there any way I can ever... I can ever win here on the spot? What do I want X to be, then, is the question. So I could have X be... Do, do, do. Two here. Four. Six. Eight. I could go to eight if I want. But I think I keep... No, is there a reason not to go to 8 becomes the question? I don't think there's a reason not to go to 8. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 8. Do this. Pay the 3. A little slow on my picks, but there we go. There's not really a reason. Like, I don't mind going down those cards. I'm just looking for a Char Belcher. And, like, so if I didn't... um, And no, I just passed turn. If I didn't do the 8 there, if I just went to 6, I guess I would have drawn the Char Belcher, but that would have been, like, really close, hilariously. Hilariously, this would have been extremely close. And now something I can do. There's a couple things I can do here, hilariously. I'm going to pass my turn to my opponent. He's waiting. He's deciding something. Um, I can cast both of these from Exile next turn. To see if my opponent has a response. We're going to see what he does. He's over here thinking. Little koi fish over here is staring at him. Looking at what he's thinking about. The gingerbread man sleeves. That's kind of a crazy animation. I never change any of my stuff on MTGA. Do you guys, do you guys actually take the time to... Um, ch I think most people do. Change your avatar. I guess it's fun, right? Change your avatar. Change your sleeves. I've never taken the time to do it. I just I just play. I don't, maybe that's a little psycho. Maybe it'd be fun to go ahead and actually change things up. Change up the environment as well. It's probably just a nice little scenery change. My opponent is thonking. Let him thonk. Let him figure out what he wants to do. Did he just get bored? Did his mom call him for lunch? It's about 11.50 a.m. What happened? Bro is cooking. Come on, give me a close game. Give me a matchup. Uh, I just passed my turn. Sure. What is bro cooking? Did the gingerbread girl take him out? 
with her little stabby spork. Come on, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, Rubik. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, he's reconnected. He's back in. We are so back. To fairy. Oh man. Um that's legitimately problematic. If he bounces the treasure, it's good. Nope, he does not. Okay. Let's get to the, good part. the problem is I just feel like I know for sure he's keeping up he's gonna be keeping up a counter spell here. Oh man. This is actually tough. I go ahead and I play my tap land. I want to get more resources, but I'm entering a really, really tough situation. I think I have to just go for my combo. I think I just go for my combo, but I'm going to enter a point where I'm not going to be able to act. I can't play Char Belcher and then just pack, so I can't activate it this turn. I think I do just have to go for my combo. These cards disappear from my, from my hand at the end of this turn anyway. At seven. If he tries to counter this, okay, I was to, I think that's actually really good for me. I think if he tries to counter that, I think I can still pact in response. Um, he is just gonna look for an answer, okay. That's fine with me. I think we might if he doesn't have a counter spell in hand, that maybe is unlucky from his position. Yeah, GG's man. This deck to me streams. The point, this is like draw, go, control. He wants to like keep a counter, get giant spells, keep a counter spell at all points. Maybe he is more combo focused than I realize. Um, I think this still, the trigger still goes off, correct? Yeah, he's dead. GG's. That's the beauty of Goblin Charbelcher is you can't kill it or deal with it in response to the activation. You have to do, it, do with it beforehand. That's a really good tip for those who are playing Historic and are playing against Charbelcher players. You gotta get rid of it beforehand. Um, make sure to let the Iron Creed go through. I can't believe I'm giving tips on how to counter me, but it's a good little tip. Good little thing to, to watch out for. Um, I always say, if you hate a deck, if you hate playing against a deck, if you despise a specific style of deck, you should play that deck. You should play it, proxy it up, whatever you gotta do. Um, play that deck, see its play style, feel its weaknesses, understand what it feels like as the pilot to understand what is like the worst possible thing that could happen to you in that moment to go against you. Understanding those things in and out is super, super important. It honestly goes for like anything in life um, or any, any video game. If you hate something, try to walk in its shoes, right? And understand its weak points or understand, maybe find a way to like it, understand it, you know, it's fair. Etc. Etc. Most of the time, at least. Got the duo over here. Olengo. Okay. This hand creates so much mana, but it doesn't do anything. I think I just mulligan this. This is a good example of gonna be a little more aggressive on the mulligans. This grabs cards. I'm gonna mulligan this. I think as well. We at least have our Iron Creed here, and we have our Reckless to grab. I'm gonna keep this. We're going to throw away the strangle and just hope we don't need it. Hope we don't need the interaction. We can't really afford to keep it with this many cards in hand. We can keep the spike field just in case. I think this is our opening hand that we want to keep. Three possible tap lands. Iron Creed, Reckless. Reckless is does get worse. I mean, the less cards you have in hand, unfortunately. Uh, there are so many times where I've discarded my Charbeltron accident. It's always unfortunate when it happens. What are you going to do? Ooh, this deck. This deck can be kind of tough. This deck can actually like combo out pretty fast and race me a fair bit. I'm gonna keep my keep my spike field for sure. They do play some like one ones, I believe. Oh, this mountain is so pretty. Ooh, he's doing a little more a little more stormy stuff than I even expected. A little more zoo stuff. This is fun. I mean, this is a fun deck. I respect it. This, this card, how could you ever be mad seeing Burning Tree Emissary? This card is cool. This card is cool. G giving Red Green the ability to like, ah, oh, man, I mean, this sucks, but it's cool. It is cool. Like giving Red Green the ability to kind of form off a little bit like this. And as it perpetually gains haste, wow. That is an MTGA card if I've ever seen it. An alchemy card if I've ever seen it. Okay, take a, take a, honestly, we're like in kind of a, he's going so fast. 
we're in a really sticky situation. Um, I don't even know what I do here. I think my only play here is to... I think I just play... I don't even know if I keep Spike Field. I'm going to play this. Yeah, I don't know if he has Goblin Lackey or something. I don't know. I don't know what Goblin Road. I don't think he's just on Goblins. I think he's just on like some sort of zoo style of deck. He's going to create his 2-2. Two -two. Okay. We're going to see what happens. We're going to take a bunch of damage. I think this is fine. I'm total. It's totally fine. Five, six, eight. I mean, he clearly doesn't have lethal on board, right, guys? Clearly, he won't kill me until the attorney can turn this into a goblin. Oh my goodness! Ember cleave costs one less for each attacking creature you control. Can he play this here? Oh my, that's disgusting. He can play Ember cleave here. Why did he not? I'm pretty sure he can play that there. Maybe he wants to play it and equip it in the same. I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure he can play that there, no? Four creatures attacked. One less for each. I'm pretty sure... Oh, each attacking. Oh, it has to be like... It's flash. Gotcha. It has to be like middle of... It's so interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Is there any way I win this game? I think I have to go ahead and reckless handling. I think I'm just... Yeah, this gives plus almost one a double strike or whatever. I think I'm just dead. Arguably, I should just FF this and move on. Pretty sure I'm dead. I don't even have mana. Yeah, this is so over. This is, this is so over. GG's. That was, a, that was a fun deck. That was a cool deck my opponent had. We'll go ahead and try to squeeze one more game in really quick. Currently 1-2. Like, not, not performing the greatest, but that's okay. Gotta get one in quickly here. Okay, quick little... Very, very quick queue, which is nice. I feel like maybe I'm just cope as well. I do feel like post Dustmorn. I haven't really seen many Dustmorn cards, I don't think though. But it feels like this deck. I feel like the meta's changed a bit where this deck is definitely less. It feels less consistent or it feels a little slow. It feels a little. It's funny. It's like a turn four win pretty consistently, but it feels. That feels too slow. A turn four win. It is a turn four win pretty consistently, but with very little interaction is the big problem. Um. So, like, this game, we're going to go ahead and play probably Spikeville Hazard tapped, turn one, turn two. Is it even worth to play the Sundering Eruption untapped turn two to play the Reckless turn two? I don't know if it will be. It depends if we draw, like, Strike at Riches or any sort of Magma Opuses or Strike at Riches. If we have any sort of acceleration. Okay, that's fine. If we draw any sort of acceleration... That's where things matter. So we just play this tapped, turn one, and pass. Play this turn one and pass. We're looking to possibly play Reckless on turn two, but it depends on our draw on turn two as well. They play a Planes. A Mirage Planes. Very smart pick. Very good set. We draw our Char Belcher. So now we don't need to Reckless. I mean, that is pretty interesting. Once again, like our play here depends on our draw. We don't need to Reckless here ever, I don't think. Actually, do I want to... I think I do Reckless here. I don't have a tap land next turn. But I could also just Reckless main phase on my turn. I don't know if there's a reason not to. Actually, no, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it to Reckless on his turn. I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Uh, For probably just two. Or no, for four. I don't need either of these cards. I just reckless for four really quick. So I'm looking for tap lands and strike at riches and magnum opuses, which I get one tap land. This is a card that needs to be cut at some point. It's just a budget inclusion. It's just something. It's not horrible. Honestly, I kind of like it. It's like a two minute cycle. Not terrible. It's, it's basically just two mana draw card. It's essentially what this is. And I can tutor for it with reckless handling. And uh, blow it up with Indominal Creativity, though. I don't like. I only play one of the Indominal Creativity. I kind of don't love that card. The problem with that card is you need five mana or so to like three plus. Yeah, you need like th five mana or whatever, or four mana, I guess. Four mana. It's it's basically an extra copy of. No, no, you need five. You need four plus a treasure token. So like a lot of times you need five mana for it, which is a lot. Uh, I'm gonna play this Tap Land, I think. 
And then probably play the egg. Play the egg, try to draw a card. We have a tap land next turn, but I want an untap land if possible. Not quite there, but that's fine. If you have a suggestion of something else I can play in the place of the egg, let me know. I like it. It's honestly solid. It also filters for a mana, which can be relevant for, like, Pact of Negation paying. Getting that double blue mana is tough. I feel like I never see enough Strike at Riches or Magnum Opuses. I feel like those are, like, the two cards I never can get enough of in this. I'm gonna play another one of these. I don't know what deck this is. When it enters, you get two energy. I tell Thriller, I'm gonna play with... Okay, I don't, know, I don't know what this deck is. What's he, what's he showing? Goblin Bombardment. Interesting. Sort of combo. I love the Mirage Lands. Mirage is... Arguably my favorite set in Magic. It's up there. Rexian Dreadnought is my favorite card of all time. Uh, I did not draw the untap land, so I do have to just play a tap land here and pass, I believe. I do have mana. I have no instance. There's no harm in doing this. Very rarely you will do this, but it is an extra. It's a reason why we play Zerda. Very, very rarely you will want to actually pay the mana to put Zerda into your hand. If it's like a grindy matchup, you can do this. Uh, static prison. What's he targeting? Non-land permanent. The egg? That's fine. It's not a flash. It doesn't. Yeah. The egg doesn't matter to me. Is he just trying to get... I don't know why he would... I guess there's... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's scared of some sort of combo. He's scared of the egg. The golden egg. You get two energy. Is he trying to get a little... Did he, did he need like one more energy or something? Or two more energy for some reason? Plays another... Amulet is going to try to tap it to... They would have gotten... I don't know what combo he's looking for. He has no resources left. Maybe he goes off next turn in some way? He has no re no resources left. Yeah, he plays this. Is he looking for lands? But he has a foundry here? I don't understand. I don't understand what he's doing. It's interesting. I love I love Goblin Bombardment. Very, very cool card. Very, very cool card. I should have the win this next turn. Pretty guaranteed. I don't think he has an interaction. I just need him to pass turn. Man is over here thinking. Thinking up a storm. Understandably so. I, I have a fair bit of practice with this deck, so I, there's not... And even, even then, I still like make long decisions sometimes. Okay, there we go. We should just win now. Uh, do we even need to play a land or anything beforehand? I don't think so. I think we just play our Iron Krieg. He can like tap one of these to exile the top card in instant speed response. Unless he's playing Pact of Negation, which I can't imagine he is. And then if he is, he should lose. I don't know of any other free counter spells. We're going to play Goblin Charbelcher. Come on. Just let us do our motions. Thank you, man. There we go. GG's. There we go. GG's. Two and two this video. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing amazing. Uh, but not bad. Not too shabby. I definitely feel like this deck has fallen off a little bit, or players are getting more used to it as well over time. But a very fun deck to play. Very you can grind it in a very brain dead way, but you can also play it in a lot more decision-making way, depending on the matchups. I, I think it's a very skill expressive deck, but also can cheese wins, which is what I kind of like, honestly. So check it out. Try out Goblin Charbelcher if you want to. Uh, if you want to see a link to it or a deck list, ask me. Maybe I'll put it in the description if I remember correctly. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe for more Magic the Gathering Arena content.